Hey guys, in the previous video I showed you how to run an ANOVA in Excel and we ran into a problem because we found that we had a p-value that was significant, so we know that our data is significant, but we don't know where in our data the significance arises. So to figure this out, we're going to have to go to another program, and I'm going to show you a web-based program that anyone can access, which is called Vassar Stats. And we are going to run our one-way ANOVA in Vassar Stats to determine where in our data our significance arises. So here I am, I just googled Vassar Stats and it's the first link, or you can type in vassarstats.net. So when you first get into Vassar Stats, it just looks like this, and you'll see that on the left, all of our tests that we might possibly want to run are over here, and we are going to want to run an ANOVA. Once we're here, we'll see that the first option is a one-way ANOVA for up to five samples, and this unit will also perform pairwise comparisons of sample means via the Tukey HSD test, and that's what we want. We want this pairwise comparison, so we are going to click the one-way ANOVA. In the beginning, it gives you all of these directions, but I'll walk you through basically how to run all of this. So you're going to scroll all the way down to the bottom until you get to the setup box, and here is where we're going to put all of our data. So the first thing that it ask, asks us is the number of samples in our analysis. And if we go back to our Excel file, we'll see that we have three different samples because we have ammonium, potassium, and sodium. And so I'm going to plug in three. And we have independent samples. They are not correlated, they're independent. So I'm going to click this button. And since we have already told it that there are three samples, the program knows that K equals 3, which is basically the number of samples that we have. So the next question is going to ask us is if we want to run an unweighted or a weighted analysis of the mean, and it doesn't really matter for us too much because each of our samples or each of our trials that we ran, so the three solutions, have the equal amount of trials. If it didn't, this question would be a little bit more important but you should usually run a weighted analysis unless you have a good reason not to do so. So I'm going to click the weighted button. And now it asks us to enter our data. And because we have three samples, it has already highlighted the three boxes that we should put our stuff in. You don't have to input all of your data separately, you can just copy and paste it. So for sample one, I'm going to go to our Excel chart and I'm going to copy our trial data. With this particular program, you can't put in your labels. So you'll just have to remember that for sample one, we are inputting the ammonium data. And for sample two, we are inserting the potassium data. And then for sample three, we're inputting the sodium. Once we've copied our data, we can scroll down and we can hit calculate. You'll notice that this box all just filled in. It gives us how many samples we had. It gives us our, our sum. It gives us our mean. It gives us our variance, our standard de deviation, and our standard error. But what we really want is the next few boxes. This is the ANOVA summary. It tells us that we did the standard weighted means analysis and that we had three samples. And the value that we're really interested in is this p-value, which is less than 0 0.05, so we know that our data was significant. That didn't tell us much more than we knew from the Excel file, so we want to look at this Tukey HSD test, which will then tell us where our differences arise in our data. Because we couldn't import our labels, you'll see that it just says M1 versus M2, which is mean 1 versus mean 2, and if you remember from our Excel sheet, mean 1 was am ammonium and mean 2 was potassium. So we have a significant difference between 
ammonium, and potassium because our p-value is less than 0 0.05. You'll see that it has then compared the other two as well. It has mean 1 versus mean 3, which is ammonium and sodium, which is also significant. And we have the third analysis, which was M2 versus M3, which was potassium and sodium. And you'll see that each of these are different from each other, which isn't always the case. So what does this mean for our data? Well, it just means that ammonium was the worst at suppressing fire breath, potassium was somewhere in the middle, and sodium was the best. But ammonium defi definitely suppressed fire breath the least, potassium suppressed fire breath kind of, but it was different than ammonium, but still greater than sodium, and sodium was the best and suppressed more fire breath than either potassium or ammonium. Now that you've done these stats, all of this information would go into your figure legend.